Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to talk about state machine. And the reason I wanted to start with state machine is because in my last video, I discussed about Saga orchestration. And one of the way of implementing Saga orchestration is to use a state machine. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about state machine and building a state machine using C-sharp. And then in subsequent video, I'm going to talk about how to use an open source state machine. And then finally using a state machine for a distributed transaction using Saga orchestration. So state machine is nothing but an implementation of the state design pattern, which is one of the pattern part of the gang of four design pattern. State pattern is a behavioral design pattern. The main intent of this pattern is to allow an object to alter its behavior when its internal state is changed. So in your day-to-day -day implementation, you might have used state pattern a lot because every object has a state and there are situations where based on the state of the object, the behavior of the object changes. Hence, I don't think it's a very new concept. It is something which you have been using, but this is something I'm going to discuss and show before I get into building a state machine. So for doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new .NET application. So I have this .NET 5 console application. And here we are going to consider the situation of a car. So a car can have multiple state. But for the simplicity of this project, we are going to focus only on three state. A started state, a running state, and a stop state. And the state of the car can be changed based on multiple action. So for starting a car, we have to have an action called start. For stopping a car, we stop. And for running a car, we have to accelerate. And then finally, based on the action, the state of the car will change and based on the state, the behavior of the car will change. Because once you start a car, only after that you can run the car using accelerate. If the car is in stop state, acceleration is not going to result in running of the car. So that is how the state of the car dictates what its behavior is. So first, let's create a new class called car. And let's make it as public. And inside of the car, let's create an enum first, which will represent the different state of the car. So we can name the enum as state. And the states can be stopped, started, and running. Similarly, we'll have another enum for the action. So we can declare public enum action and the action can have three action once again. Stop, start, accelerate. Okay. Now the car can have other properties and method, but we're going to focus on one property and the single method. So the property that we are going to focus on is the state. So for that, first let's declare a private state. And let's set the default value of the state as stopped. Because when first we start working with the car, its state is going to be stopped. And let's expose this variable through a property and let's make this property as a immutable property so I can name the property as current state it will be a get only property and it is just going to return the internal state of the car Okay. Now, next thing what we want to do is we want to now allow a way to change the state of the car, which essentially is going to change the behavior. Now, there are multiple way of doing it. One of the common way of doing it is through an observer pattern, 
which is basically through an event subscription and based on the event you can change the state now for simplicity of this example of state machine I'm just going to create a function which is going to take care of changing of the state and the function is going to be public void take action and it's going to take action as a variable and then what we are going to do is the idea is to change the state of the object based on the action so we can say state which is the internal variable is equal to and here what we can do is we can use a switch condition and for the switch condition we can take the state as the first parameter and action as the second parameter and here let's consider different state that we might have to deal with so the first state that we have to do is let's say the current state is stopped and the incoming action is start in which case the state should be state dot started and let's consider the current state is started the action is accelerate then the state should be changed to running and let's say the state is started and the action is stop in that case the state will be changed to stopped and similarly if the state is running and the action is stop the state will be changed to stopped for all other condition we are just going to keep the state as is so it will be just current state so this is essentially what we created as a state machine so based on an action we are changing the state of the object and depending on the state the object will behave differently for example if it is stopped it can be only started it cannot be changed to accelerate or it cannot be changed to stop because it's already stopped whereas when it is started it cannot be started once again because it's already started it can only be stopped or accelerated uh, similarly if it is running then the only thing we can do is stop we cannot start it because it's already started so this takes care of all the condition and now what we can do is we can go into the main program and here we can create a new instance of the class car so we can say car equal to new car and then first we can just print out the current state of the car and the current state of the car is going to be car dot current state and then we can do car dot take action and now we want to do is start the car and we can print the current state then we can do car dot take action and we can say car dot we can say car dot action dot and we can pass the start again if we pass the start it will still be started the next thing we can do is car dot take action and here we can say action dot accelerate and this is going to change the state of the car to running and then finally we can stop the car again so we can say car dot take action and we can say action dot stop and now the state of the car will be stopped so let's run the application now 
and as you can see initially it was stopped when we send the action start it got started we send the action start again but this time it was still started then we send the action accelerate which made it to running and then we send the action stop which stopped the car so this is exactly what we expected out of the state machine so this example shows you how to implement the state design pattern using a state machine and this is a very simple state machine created using a switch condition in my next video i am going to show how you can do the same thing and little bit more complex state management using a uh, open source state machine and then i am going to take on how to use the state machine as a part of saga orchestration pattern so as you can see it was fairly simple and using this kind of switch statement we can cover simple cases like this but where the state are very complex and there are multiple state that the object goes through it's better to use a already built open source NuGet package for a state machine rather than building something from scratch because it's going to save a lot of time so that's all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video